Sākam, jā. Labdien, sākam pret... Good morning. We are ready to start our press conference. I'd like to thank uh, all of you who have arrived. Uh, first of all, I'd uh, give a floor to the Parliamentary Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Latvia, Madame Zanda Lukashevica. And uh, then I'll give the floor to Nevan Mimica, European Commissioner for International Cooperation and Development. Now the floor is yours, Madame Lukashevica. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much for showing your interest in our conference, dear journalists. Now we'll be able to discuss now the main goals and the results of the conference. But first of all, I'd like to thank Commissioner Mimica for participation and for support of the Commission in organizing this conference. And uh, we are indeed very honored that uh, during our presidency, Mr. Mr. Commissioner has, uh, has been already twice in Latvia. Thank you very much for finding the time and participating in this event. This again confirms the excellent cooperation between the presidency and cooperation uh, and the commission uh, to foster important cooperation development issues. Uh, when it comes to the European Year for Development and the development policy in general, we know that the European Union is the biggest donor of uh, development aid, uh, and the majority of funding uh, is earmarked for fostering equality. Two years ago, the European Union gained the Nobel Prize uh, for its contribution in promoting human rights and prosperity. And uh, as you may remember, in 2014, Malala Yousafzai was awarded the Nobel Prize uh, for her struggle for the rights of uh, women and children uh, to education. These are just some landmarks uh, showing that human rights and uh, women's rights uh, become more visible and gain importance in international environment. When it comes to today's conference in Riga, uh, today the conference is attended by 260 participants coming from more than 40 countries. We have representatives from Latvia, from the European Union member states, uh, representatives from public and organizations and NGO, international organizations, the United Nations, OECD, the World Bank, and the International Labour Organization. I'm happy just to note that private sector is widely represented, including uh, international companies which play a crucial role in financing development and uh, fostering entrepreneurial activity in the developing countries. We also have a great number of local authority representatives and students. Now about goals and content of the conference. So first of all, I'd like to underscore that we await, await very practical results. And we focus on a very concrete topic, fostering of economic empowerment. Today, we tackle such issues uh, as um, equal rights in the labor market, uh, financing available to women to start uh, business activity, and also the contribution of women in promoting sustainable development. In line with UN forecasts, um, by providing uh, women as many jobs as for men, the GDP in the developing countries would increase by 13 percent. For example, if in African continent uh, women had the same rights to land and um, microcredits as men, then the total GDP of Africa could go up as much as by 20 percent. And practice shows that um, increasing the number of girls at schools by 10 percent, uh, the GDP of a country can go up uh, by 3 percent in the average. There were just a few figures showing how practically important is the topic of this conference and how much we need to implement the results of our decisions. Equal access to land and financial resources may help to decrease the number of people starving from hunger by approximately 150 million. When it comes to results and use of results of the conference, we first of all plan to summarize the results in the final report. The final report will be used in an ongoing EU discussion. 
uh, when we evaluate the accomplishment to date and uh, when we talk about uh, our improvements for the future. And during our presidency in uh, May, uh, we plan also in the Council to approve the position or conclusions on gender equality. And second, uh, secondly, uh, we plan to provide a practical contribution in the UN intergovernmental context so when we discuss the new sustainable development goals, uh, which should be agreed by the end of the year. And we would like to focus on strengthening the rights of women. Uh, very briefly about contribution and experience of Latvia. Latvia is actively involved in uh, strengthening gender equality in the global level. Uh, we participate in the UN Women Executive Committee, and we are a member of the UN Human Rights uh, Council. Um, NGOs of Latvia are actively working in the area of uh, protecting uh, women's rights, both in Latvia and also in countries of Central Asia. Latvian experts um, advise heads of local governments uh, and provide recommendations to Uzbekistan authorities to foster uh, involvement of women. And we have cooperation with several partners in Central Asia. And in this partnership, we have set up uh, support centers for women uh, to struggle against discrimination. These are just a few examples on involvement and contribution of NGOs. Uh, Tomorrow, on the 3rd of March, our long-standing partner, the Resource Center, Marta, will organize a roundtable discussion with our Central Asia partners, focusing uh, on, on um, the methods how to tackle violence um, against women. Latvia uh, has the experience to share with other countries. Uh, in fact, uh, we have a very huge privilege to live in a country where approximately 53% of uh, research workers are women, 68% of people with higher education are women, and more than 40% of managers of Latvian enterprises are women, which is the highest result uh, of this kind in the European Union. Well, this was already reinforced uh, at the beginning of the conference today. Finally. I'd like to remind you that uh, the them thematic year of Europe today is dedicated to the development cooperation, and each month focuses on a specific area. And March is the month uh, of uh, rights of women and girls. And I'd like to remind you that uh, during the World press conference, uh, which will be held in Riga from the 2nd to the 4th of May, uh, a discussion will be dedicated to rights of women. So we may say that uh, the importance of this issue will be present in many debates to come during our presidency. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, uh, dear uh, colleagues, representatives of the press. Uh, first of all, let me sincerely thank the Latvian Presidency uh, for organizing this event, this conference, uh, with, with such an important topic and, and a timely uh, conference that would really uh, inform the overall, uh, overall work that is underway in, uh, in the European Commission, in the Council, among the member states, uh, uh, in order to come to, to, to a very robust, to, to, to a very uh, comprehensive uh, ec gender, e European Union's gender action plan. So uh, this is the, the main reason why, uh, why this conference really shall contribute to the, uh, to, to the EU discussion on, on how to make EU policies more coherent and more active in the, in the gender uh, equality uh, area. Uh, what we have in front of us as, a, as a priorities of the European Union's uh, development policies are threefold. First of all, this is... Uh, uh, a year when the new global development agenda will be set, will be shaped within the UN system in the negotiations uh, on the post-2015 sustainable development goals track in New York, then for the financing for development or means of implementation of, this, uh, of these uh, goals in the, in the, uh, the so-called Addis, Addis Ababa uh, track uh, and, and, and the conference in uh, July. Uh, 
and this this is uh, a track overall uh, development global development uh, uh, sustainable development track that that we are engaged on uh, during this year the other uh, priority is setting the, the the european union's own strengthened partnership especially with african countries and the so-called acp countries african caribbean pacific countries uh, once the uh, cotonou agreement that that formed uh, uh, this special development partnership uh, with these regions uh, when it expires uh, after 2020 so this year we shall launch a public consul consultation in order to see what could be the successor to to uh, to this agreement Agreement, how to strengthen the partnership uh, uh, with, our, with our partner countries in development. And the third uh, priority is our own, our own uh, policy coherence for development. We have to strengthen the, the, the impact the, uh, of all European policies in the, in, the, in the global scene, in the development cooperation area, in order to have uh, uh, Europe as a or to, to, to keep Europe as a, as a major development contributor and, and, and major development and the most efficient development, uh, development uh, contributor and partners in the, in the world. So we cannot ask others to do something what we do not do at home. Uh, so therefore, a coherence of EU policies for development will be reflected also in, in, in the coherence of our development, uh, development agenda. When we uh, speak of our priorities, when we work on them globally, uh, regionally with, with our special partners and inside the Europe, there is always one overarching uh, cross-cutting uh, cross horizontal issue that comes and that fits into all these uh, priority areas, and this is gender equality. Therefore, when it comes to, uh, gen uh, to, 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 to uh, priority policy, priority agenda, priority uh, action uh, in all EU development uh, uh, activities, then it is uh, definitely gender uh, equality and, and the women's uh, empowerment uh, issues. So, because development simply cannot happen if, if half of a, uh, of, of a population uh, is, is, is left behind. And, and we would like, therefore, to have a very concrete and very robust uh, action plan that would actually engage, uh, engage uh, across the globe engage uh, uh, women and uh, into into overall sustainable uh, development uh, uh, development issues uh, the millennium development goals have played an important role in the in the increasing attention to gender equality and women's empowerment a lot has been achieved for instance so far uh, the, 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 the meeting Millennium Development Goals uh, helped 300,000 female students enroll in secondary uh, education in our partner countries uh, since 2004. Or 7.5 million uh, births uh, were attended by skilled health personnel. These are really remarkable, uh, remarkable uh, results uh, of, of our agenda, uh, agenda, agenda. But still, there is a long way to go. Even when you look into uh, into uh, the development goals, Millennium Development Goals, there is. Uh, I'm afraid the biggest gap between the, the, the commitments and goals and the, and the real, uh, uh, real implementation uh, in, in this uh, gender, uh, gender equality uh, goal area. So therefore, therefore we, shall, we are committed at a European Commission level to push for a more, for faster, for better, uh, for better uh, development agenda uh, on on on, uh, on gender uh, on gender equality. So uh, I I will really be one at at, at the helm of of, of of such an agenda, such an ambitious and, and robust uh, agenda, and such an ambitious and, and, and robust successor to the to the. Uh, current uh, gender action plan uh, for, for development uh, cooperation. Uh, 
in autumn, somewhere by, by October, we plan to have, uh, to have this gender action plan as a commission's communication and then uh, as, a, as a council, uh, council uh, document or council uh, uh, conclusions on, on, on a gender action plan for the period of 2016 until 2020. Uh, uh, for me, as I told this morning, this must be, this action plan, gender action plan must be more action than a plan itself. So, uh, and this is how we shall address uh, uh, the, the issue. So, this year is really an, an unparalleled opportunity to, to, to make a difference in the, life, in the lives of, of millions of people. Uh, and, and this is a year when we really have to, to help to, to empower uh, women and girls uh, everywhere, everywhere they, 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 they live. So, my my appeal would be to work together to make this a reality. So, and and I, I will leave you with, with, a, with a simple but decisive statement that I actually told for the first time here just two months ago in the, in the opening, uh, in the launching of the, uh, of the uh, European Year for Development, and this is uh, no women, no dignity, no development. So, thank you. Thank you very much for these introductions. Are there any questions? And uh, if you have questions, you could uh, say whom you represent. Questions went to, uh, to Commissioner Mimikan, uh, second one to uh, Ms. Antokan Koshevitz. So uh, I recall as well launch of uh, European uh, Development uh, Year, and um, uh, you mentioned as well uh, that uh, you will be the most vocal male uh, feminist <laughs> in the European Commission. So, um, but my, my question is: um, uh, is what what are your uh, uh, plans and activities around um, uh, grants and investment in? Uh, in, uh, and funds for um, uh, women's human rights uh, non-governmental organizations, uh, NGOs. So um, uh, the data uh, we have shows that uh, there is still little funding uh, uh, of uh, development aid going to uh, NGOs and especially to gender equality and women's uh, human rights uh, NGOs. And in some states it's uh, even around 1% or less. So the, the question is, so wh wh what are your plans? What will you do? What's on your mind and what's on your agenda to, to have uh, more funds for, uh, for women's NGO to, to work in development cooperation? And the, on, on your times, can uh, Lukashevich? And the question to Mrs. Lukashevich. We see that the Cabinet of Ministers at present looks into these issues and there is financing on the national level for cooperation and development. What does the government, what does the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will do differently in 2016 to avoid the situation that of this year when we see that the Cabinet of Ministers has a plan and the social partners and NGOs have only 28,000 euros envisaged. And then 180,000 euros are for up for competition. And the 180, 100,000 will be for training programs for the universities. Could the NGOs next year expect something better? Thank you. Thank you for this question on funding the, the, the overall uh, uh, gender equality uh, uh, agenda, because this is an important part of the, of the overall, uh, overall uh, uh, activity of the European Union in the, in the uh, gender equality uh, area. Uh, the good news 
I will start from the good news side. Uh, good news is that we managed to uh, preserve the, the uh, and even a bit increase the overall uh, development uh, development budget development envelope for the uh, for the next seven years in the in the in the financial perspective for the next seven years 2014 2020. Uh, and within this uh, development envelope, we have a number of, uh, uh, of uh, instruments or specific, be it regional or thematic programs directed to, uh, for instance, to, to human rights and democracy uh, development or some specific, uh, uh, specific uh, uh, instruments that are, uh, that are uh, directed channeling the, the, the uh, uh, financial funding, the programs related to the, to, to, uh, and projects related to gender, uh, gender uh, uh, equality uh, agenda. Uh, what we have to do better in the in, in the future, in the, in the next years, are uh, twofold. First of all, uh, we have to uh, let us say better structure the, the the implementation or funding the implementation of these uh, of these uh, uh, goals. Uh, better structuring for me means that uh, we have to. Uh, uh, to rely more on a, on a on the ground activities that are better that are that are implemented by by, by uh, entities or, or uh, by by our cooperation or implementation partners that are the best uh, placed uh, uh, on the ground and in that context I see that NGOs and their activities is is very very important because you can be the ones that are uh, best placed in, in some of the of the areas, some of the regions, in some of the of the programs. So, uh, internal structuring of, of the of uh, among uh, many instruments uh, actually would lead to to, to increasing the, 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 the level, the portion uh, of the uh, uh, funding uh, gender equality projects uh, on the on the NGO. Uh, side and the second uh, second goal and the second activity for me might be to to uh, let us say to better uh, better concentrate better integrate all the uh, all the various numbers of, of, of uh, budget lines uh, uh, various numbers of instruments that we are now using as, as, as a funding tool for uh, uh, for uh, gender uh, equality programs in that context I look forward to the to the mid uh, midterm review of the overall uh, financial uh, instruments of the European Union, including development uh, envelope uh, in 2017, uh, when, when uh, my proposals would go towards, let us say, having, if not a single, uh, a single instrument for gender equality financing, but then at least more focused, more integrated uh, instruments and not dispersed instruments for, uh, for funding the, the, the gender equality issues. In both contexts, better structuring and better integrating uh, programs, I see that the role and the contribution uh, of the NGOs will be increased. Thank you. As the Commissioner mentioned in July in Addis Ababa, there will be an agreement as regards financing for cooperation development policy. And of course, the aim is that 0.7% of the GNP goes for this. Well, within the European Union, we are talking about the two level goals, 0.7 from GNP in the EU. Those countries that joined after 2004 would be 0.33%. It would also mean that for Latvia, we would have to contribute to this policy, and this would mean more financing for development cooperation. Last year, when a public opinion poll took place in Latvia, and knowing that we have all the problems with financing in our budget, there was a majority support to increase this financing. I think this would mean 
that we would have more money for separate projects. If we come to your concrete issue about the financing this year, 2015, that is also the Commission co-financing for the NGOs, and that is 25, more than 25,000. We have also stated that the projects have been more about informing Latvian society about the importance, and the result is there. Society actually supports us, but there have been very few projects as to financing the receivers. For informing, we have 100,000 from the Commission and 25,000 national co-financing, and the non-governmental organizations receive this money. And there is also a foreign ministry, 14,000 euro financing for participation in international events and hiring of rooms. And together with other NGOs in 2015, there will be the possibility also to apply for the funding within the projects, 75,000 euros. So if we look at the proportions of how we use this financing, does, does it go for information or for concrete projects? The proportion for information was very high. And we think that in this year, the growth should go for concrete projects in our partner countries and taking into account the projects, especially, I mean here, Ukraine. So the project carried out by Riga Law University that has 140,000 euros together with Stockholm, uh, High School and University of Latvia is a three months program in European rights and economy. So, and we are talking mostly about Central Asia and Eastern partnership countries. This is meant for formation of leadership qualities, Latvian participation priority regions, and also a professional education center in Riga so that Latvia would be, for Eastern partnership countries, a reform facilitator. And there is co-financing from the big donors for this, for example, Luxembourg and the United States. And we see that this program is very valuable. For 15 places, we had more than 300 applications, so more than 20 candidates per place. And returning to our panel discussion, we saw that human capital will deserve much more attention. Leadership is very important for development. And this includes, of course, women's rights and gender equality. Giving educational investment carries a lot of added value, and I think in the long term will be very beneficial. Thank you. One short question, if there is one. If not, thank you very much. We conclude the press conference, and you are kindly invited for the other information.